Hey Tim, good to see you again. It's been so long. <laughs> yeah, it's been uh, three quarters of an hour. <laughs> exactly. Sorry we're running a, a little bit late uh, this afternoon, team, but we did have a big commercial webinar, which was a, it was an interesting hour, wasn't it, Tim? Yeah, well, I think we had about 700 people or something. A lot on of it. people. And really interesting, the questions that were coming through. Yeah. Um, because uh, obviously this, the code that they've given us, the ink's uh, not yet dry, so everybody was challenging it. So yeah. uh, it's going to be interesting times. Yeah, it sure is. Um, and we are in the, the daily EDM that will go out um, later on this afternoon. We'll have links to all of the sites that we referred to during that webinar. Um, we will have uh, the PowerPoint presentation and then by tomorrow up on our website, we will also have a link to the actual webinar itself. So if you missed it, tune in there. Um, and, and additionally, Leanne, yep. um, we also have those two letters up there already on our site. That's the okay. one that we would write to the tenant to gather that information. Yep. So it's a pro forma letter that uh, members right. might choose to use and then yep. the other letter that they can then write to the landlord. So try and bring a little bit of process um, yeah. to the procedure if, if, if people are interested in it. Yeah, good idea. It makes it easy for our, um, our property managers have got enough yeah. to worry about, right? Um, now, I know that you were very keen to talk about um, landlord insurance today. Yeah, so um, I know I've already mentioned this once, but um, the reason I'm doing it again is because we are getting um, additional uh, information coming through. So I just wanted to drive this point home. Um, landlord insurance, as all insurances, have um, uh, the terms within the policy that will trigger your right to be able to recover a loss. So just because there is a loss doesn't mean that it's going to be within the circumstances of the policy for you to be able to recover it. So I, I, I doubt very much that um, any of the policies, well, uh, the majority, if any, of the policies ever thought about us having a pandemic. Um, and I think that that would go right across the community. So, so we're in a situation now in the, um, in the residential space where the landlord is going to be asked to reduce the rent, which is fine. Um, but in the landlord, if they say to themselves, well, look, I don't mind doing that, I'll reduce it because I can then go and speak to my, uh, my landlord's insurance provider and I'll get the money back. And that may very well not be the case. So, so I think before you start doing those things, what you should be doing is speaking to the, um, uh, to the insurance provider and saying to them, what, well, how do I move forward on this? Yeah, that's really good advice. You shouldn't do anything without um, speaking to the, the insurance provider because each policy is different um, and each Correct. company is different. So you can't just, just because you know the answer for, for Realty Protect doesn't mean you should assume that Terry Shear is the same. So yeah. make sure you so go back there to is a, people. There is a danger there for agents because I, this is the reason I was driving the point home so fast is there are agents saying to the to their, uh, to their landlords, don't worry about it, we've got insurance, I'll go off and do this for you. Mm. Um, and of course, that may come back to bite them. So I yeah. just need to be very careful in that space. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've had a lot of feedback today from property managers that are saying, my tenant will not engage, they're two weeks behind, I don't know if they're COVID affected or not. And so what I've actually done this afternoon is I have recorded a video just saying, hi, I'm Leanne Pilkington, President of the Real Estate Institute of New South Wales. Um, as a tenant, here are your obligations. And so I just thought it might be handy for someone to have a third party, um, a perceived expert, external to uh, the individual businesses. So if any of um, anybody, any of our members want a copy of that video, um, please just reach out on um, email and I'm happy to send it through to anyone. Um, you and I also had a chat earlier today over email, Tim, about the concept of having private inspections but blocking an hour. So to say, okay, if you'd like to visit Smith Street, um, call me to book your private inspection between the hours of 10 and 11. And we've both got some concerns about that, right? Yeah, well, with the social distancing requirements, um, the people, you're not allowed to have any more than two people in the property at any one time. And that, inclu that includes the agent. Correct, that includes the agent. Yeah. And um, so look, you know, buying a property in my view and the experience of buying a property is not like going down to a Woolworths um, where there's a queue out the front, as you can imagine, 
and we're all doing social distancing. <laughs> um, look, I, I just I just think that is the, the entirely wrong image. Even if you can uh, have that uh, requirement with a security guard out the front as they do and have people down no. the street waiting to get in, that, that's not the way you do it as a professional person. You no. can only have two people in there. I know it's... Uh, I know it's time consuming and inconvenient, but it's just part of the horrible ramifications of this COVID-19, but I, I, just and, don't, I just wouldn't do it. No, I agree. And even though the, the, the regulations don't specifically prescribe what you can and can't do, it's very clear to people, including the agent. And so what I want everybody to really embrace is following the spirit of what the government is asking us to do. Not trying to get around all the rules, but following the spirit of what um, the government are asking us to do, because that way we'll be able to continue doing it. If we try and find ways around the rules, we potentially run the risk of, of getting shut down. And that is the last thing any of us need. And I reckon, I reckon of all the things we might say here in this, uh, in this uh, video, that'll be, that's the most important. Because yeah. we're playing the long game here. Yeah. And uh, if you start to go down that pathway and challenging the authorities and asking them to put us under the microscope, that's a very, very good way for us to um, get shut down completely. So 110% yeah. agree with you. Beautiful. All right, have you got anything else to add before we sign off for today? Um, only that we've got our regulation. So oh, yesterday, yeah, um, yesterday we said that um, we, uh, we, did, we had a briefing from Fair Trading um, which followed the minister's announcements on Monday. Yep. So we had that briefing and, and we're given some further insight into it, um, which is all valuable. There's no doubt about that. But the, um, the actual rules, if you will, are in the regulation. And um, we've had that for about a couple of hours now. And because you and I were doing the commercial thing, I haven't had a chance to look no. at it. So that'll be on my short list uh, now. But we've and, got it, yeah. so we will be able to go out with some additional information Great. to members um, over, the, over the next day or so. Okay, so um, you can do your homework overnight and I'll ask you all the right questions tomorrow about four o'clock in the afternoon. How does that Yeah, sound? well, that seems reasonable, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. All right, well, you have a good night and I'll check you in too. tomorrow. Okay, bye. Bye.